Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central. Join with me today is my friend Samuel Rowland from um, Last Word on College Football is a is a site that he writes for, and I reached out to him because I read an article that he did about a new Husker recruit that's a receiver, and I immediately said, "Dude, like I, I, I one, I really like the article." So Sam, like, great job, dude. Like, as you're getting rolling in this world of of college football writing. I just want to give you a big shout out on that. Also want to say go give him a follow which he can give you his his uh his Twitter handle in just a minute. But we're going to be talking about in this video receivers, what receivers we see in the portal. Um Nebraska is eyeballing or who we could see, who they've offered, who we think they should offer. We're also going to be looking at the latest uh, Husker commit at a high school and what Sam really likes about him. So we're going to just dive into all of that in this video. So we're going to get it, go ahead and get it started. So Sam, uh, right off the dude, uh, Julian Fleming, Ohio State. Right. I, I see that he is, you know, he's six foot two, two hundred ten pounds. He's the number eighteen ranked receiver in the portal. Uh, he was the number one rated receiver coming out of high school. Like he was the number one recruit in that year, which I I didn't even know that. I knew he was a highly ranked five star receiver. He grades out really well in 2022. Drops off in 2023. He had I don't know if he got hurt, but he had to split time uh, yeah, with, with another five star. Yep, with Marvin Harrison. Yeah, um, they have some pretty Ryan Day and that staff have some pretty talented receivers. So. So, so tell me, like, what is it about Julian Fleming? Like, why, why Nebraska should be targeting him? What is it that, that you really like about Julian Fleming? Well, um, Julian Fleming is a big play, um, explosive wide receiver from what I've seen on film. Um, he could really, really give a boost to, um, especially with the departure of Billy Kemp, um, the fourth, who was the Virginia transfer. He was a um, focal point of the offense before he got injured. And um, especially now that we're hearing with um, hearing about news um, with the quarterback, um, Ohio State quarterback Kyle McCord um, in the transfer, transfer portal, um, he can come in and impact. Um, uh, they can come in as a package deal, excuse me. They can come in, uh, McCord and Fleming as teammates, um, as former teammates can come yeah. in as a package deal. And yeah, if we got McCord and Fleming, like you're, you're right. Like they already have some chemistry together, knowing one another. Um, when I watch Julian Fleming on tape, his 2022 tape, as we just said, is, is better than uh, his 2023 tape. But uh, he is a big guy. Who he reminds me of, I don't know if you follow pro football a lot, but um, I'm a big Buccaneers fan. He reminds me of Chris Godwin. Chris big Godwin, body, yeah. um, can play can play that X receiver. He plays. He can play the slot. He can do a lot of end arounds. Like they did a little bit of everything with him. He also can return punts and kicks. Like you're talking about Billy Kemp uh, being a guy who uh, is is return leaving punts at the end of the year. Yeah. So so with Julian Fleming being able to kind of do a little bit of everything, but he's bigger than Billy Kemp, which is what I like. Um, I think, yeah, right off the bat, that's a guy that you go makes a ton of sense. Um, uh, the other thing that I, I noticed about him is, is, and you tell me what you think, Sam, I, though Malachi Coleman and Jalen Lloyd are big guys and Malachi Coleman is a big bodied receiver, not great at, at blocking i know that they kind of grayed out pretty good on pff but he actually is known for his run blocking and pass blocking and if i see one more wide receiver screen go for no yards or negative <laughs> yards i'm gonna scream yeah you know what i mean exactly and so having julian fleming there uh, i think is a is a big deal what do you think i think that's a big deal um perimeter run blocking has been one of the biggest kind of weaknesses of um, Husker football in the past uh, shoot decade. Um, <laughs> it feels like really. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't know. They're just um, Nebraska is not really forceful on the edge. And maybe if Fleming comes in, he can kind of set that tone and um, say, Hey, um, we're going to um, I block hard. Now you, now you as teammates block. Right. Right. So, yeah. I um the other thing I noted when I was reading up on on Julian Fleming, a lot of the writers say he's a very hard worker. 
Like he's he's a dude that's a kind of a lunch pail kind of guy, which I feel like fits that Matt Rule style uh, of of we go to work and we work hard every day. And it fits the exact style of Nebraska as a program. Um, yep. Uh, blue blood, um, hard work, uh, fullback, um, Tom Osborne, that type of um, mold. So yeah. 100%. Yeah, look at looking at the tape and I wish I would have gotten some some tape for you guys to watch. Typically I do. Um I was kind of crunched for time this go around and I kind of asked Sam kind of last minute if he would jump on with me, but if you just go and just watch some Julian Fleming tape, I think you it would really excite you as as Sam has already said, he he is a big play guy, but he's not afraid of the grimy catches either, right? Man. That, he that extends it, for first downs and yeah. um that's what's really impressed me is he can um, extend and um, keep drives alive, which is what we really need. We can't um, uh, this past season um, we've um, not had success on first and second down. And um, that's really, really important to have success on those downs to prepare yeah. you for further downs. So he gets open. He finds he gets really he has a really good feel for zone and he goes across the middle. I mean, he got he's gotten popped and some of the stuff and, and the dude just jumps right back up, holds onto the ball. All things that we want to see uh, with a Husker receiver. But I, I would love out of all the receivers we're going to talk about that are transfer guys. Julian Fleming, though, he's not the highest rated one. He's my favorite. And again, because of that Kyle McCord, yep. um, if we have a chance at Kyle McCord, which I really feel like we do. I think that he's he is having that having that chemistry. Okay, so um, his PFF grade, by the way, I, I meant to say this uh, for 2022 was 67.4, which is above average grade. For 2023 was 61.4, which is an average grade, um, but still not bad. I mean, he, he still caught uh, for 2023 at 26 catches, 270 yards, but in 2022 he had six touchdowns uh, and like 900 and something yards. So big big difference there. Um, Sam, let's keep going. So Donovan McCauley out of Indiana, not a speedster, big. He's more of a possession style guy. There's not a lot of tape on him because he was a quarterback. Uh, he, he came into Indiana as a quarterback, transferred and then he over, transferred over from wide, and then he transferred over to the wide receiver. Yeah, so he he is not a burner in the least. Uh, he is six foot five, two hundred uh, two hundred pounds. He's the number fifteenth ranked receiver in the portal. Um, but he grades out, man. He grades out as a 75.5, uh, PFF grade, which is a very good grade, but he is that dude. When I was the, the little bit of tape you find on him, it's a lot of that go up, you know, throw fades and, and possession boxing guys out very yeah. basketball style. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, he's, um, six foot five, 200 pounds. Um, obviously he would add, a uh, tall taller element um to um the room um and i think um he would provide sort of that um uh jump ball ability um that yep. goes along with kind of the deep threat um that you said um, we wouldn't we haven't seen that jump ball deep threat kind of guy since uh morgan stanley jr would you agree yep um and i think jordan westercamp was kind of um, he was kind of a shifty um, uh, guy that uh, played at receiver um, in 2016, which was yeah. our last bowl season. So, so yeah. So, I, I mean, I, he had 48 catches, 644 yards, six touchdowns this year. He was an all Big Ten honorable mention. I mean, for a guy who moved from quarterback to receiver, I mean, he's got he's got the accolades. The only the Nebraska did offer. They haven't offered Julian Fleming. Um, I do think it's coming because we do know that that Satterfield met with Fleming along with um, Kyle McCord when he was there in Columbia. But uh, they have offered Donovan McCauley, but also Michigan and Penn State have both offered um, McCauley. So that kind of tells you like how other schools are thinking are thinking of him so far. And those are um, two of the most dominant programs in college football to date so yeah. that kind of makes it hard for the huskers to sneak a recruiting victory in there but we'll yeah. see yeah yeah 
A lot, the the third guy, the last guy that we'll talk about before we go into the high school recruiting is uh, Chris Brazel. You you actually brought him to my attention. Uh, I was not familiar with him. Chris Brazel, the second out of uh, Tulane. He is the number 22 portal receiver. Um, he was a third star, still is considered a third star. Six foot five, 195 pounds, redshirt freshman. Has no offers yet out of the portal. He grades out as a at a booming seventy six point three with forty four receptions, seven hundred eleven yards, and five touchdowns. Yeah. Only plays a, that wide out position. Whereas McCauley and Fleming both have gone slot. They can do that X receiver. They they've kind of done a little bit of everything. Brazel only at Tulane only played that X receiver position. Um, I couldn't find any tape on him. No. Do you have any other information? Well, um, I do have some information. Um, he's um, a freshman. Um, he's from Midland, Texas. Um, and so Matt Rule and this staff um, have got to like that. I mean, they are big Texas guys and um, have recruited heavily in the state of Texas before um, with Baylor and um, um, their other stop, Temple. So... Um, they have some connections there and they um, could potentially pull him out. Um, he has no offers in the transfer portal. So I could see that um, manifesting itself. Well, I mean, he's a big, another big guy. He's, it seems like he's got a little bit more speed from what I understand, but another possession guy uh, out of, out of the three Fleming is definitely my dude. I, I, I love guys that are grimy, grimy catch guys and just kind of, those uh, blue chip kind of dudes that just go to work, and if he's a hard worker, um, and he's already he's already proven that he can play at a big high level at a big school, uh, and again bringing Kyle McCord back into it, I think he he makes a lot of sense. Now, let's talk about high school recruiting. Let's talk about that one recruit that just committed. Give us his name. Give us his background. I mean, dude, you wrote a, an excellent article on him. So so tell the the viewers why we should be excited. Um, yep. So his name is Chris or not Chris CJ Simon. Um, he committed to Nebraska over offers from Oklahoma state, Texas tech and Kansas state. Um, this is kind of a big deal, um, because Kansas state is, um, Kansas state and Oklahoma state are, um, generally ranked every year and they are bigger programs than what Nebraska has to offer. So um, at this point in time, not saying that they won't be or um, whatever, but at this point in time, Nebraska just isn't at that spot and they ha are at that spot. Um, so um, that's one of the reasons. And what are, his, um, what, are his, what are his measurables? Do you know? His measurables are, um, Six foot one and 165 pounds. He's got to so, put on. He's got to put on some weight. Yep, he's got to put on some weight, um, and that's expected for kind of every freshman that walks in the building. That's um, true. So um, he definitely has to do that to catch up with Jalen Lloyd and um, Malachi Coleman, who have already um, been in that system. Um, and I have um, faith that he will do that. Um, hey, Malachi, Malachi Coleman, though he looks very lean, he he's muscular, dude. Like I've 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 seen the guy up close and personal, and yeah, he's a skinny cat, but he's he's a he's a pretty muscular dude for his size. Um, and we'll get into Malachi Coleman and Jalen Lloyd in just a second. What else? Do you, what do you do? You have anything else to to add? Well, he's a, is do. he a three, is he a three star? He is a three star. Yep. Okay. Um. So. I just want to add why he committed. Um, he kind of likes the family environment and how the coaches are relatable. Um, specifically, this um, comes in with Garrett McGuire, who's, I think, 23 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Um, pretty young guy. So um, that's definitely an advantage to most other programs who um, kind of have an older wide receiver coach that he can um, – he knows his struggles and what – um, he's gone through so, yeah. and, um, and next year, um, big 10 ads, um, Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA, um, to, um, 
the conference. So that's already going to be really, um, really tough for Nebraska to compete. Um, but um, that had something to do with it and competing at a big time school. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you look at Oklahoma state, when you look at Kansas state, you look at the big 12, you're like, all right. I mean, it's still competitive. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying that it's not competitive, but I think if you are a high school recruit coming in, yes, Nebraska has not had success as of late, as of late, late, late. Uh, but you, like you just said, I mean, it's, it's basically a super conference at this point, them and the right. SEC are super conferences. And I, I think that you bringing in Oregon, bringing in Washington, uh, bringing in UCLA, you're bringing in, in, in USC, you're bringing in some, some, some schools point. with clout, but you're also bringing in a lot of athletic, uh, very athletic schools. You know what I mean? And so we're going to see, it's, I think we're also going to see a little bit of a change in the big 10. What do you think about as far as like speed? I mean, did you watch Oregon and Washington? Yeah. They're flying all over the place. Yeah. They have Dan Lanning and, um, I don't know the Washington head coach's name off the top of uh, my head. Is it DeBoer? Uh, that's NC state, I think. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, so yeah, I can't think of his name either. Uh, and Chris Klein is the, is it Chris Klein or is that the guy yeah. from Kansas state? I think that's the guy from Kansas state. <laughs> I'm not, sorry guys. Uh, should have <laughs> done some research. We weren't even planning on kind of going that direction, but so yeah, I, I think that as a, as a, what I like about what the Huskers are doing is they tend to spot gyms when nobody else is spotting gyms. Right. They're, they're finding athletes in the state of Texas. They're finding athletes, some in, in the state of Florida, but mostly in Texas. And they're just gyms, dude. Like, and they're getting there way before anybody else. And so I have no doubt that CJ um, will will Develop. progress to being at least serviceable, if not a stud. Like I, I don't I look at Malachi Coleman, I'll look at Jalen Lloyd. Jalen Lloyd, man, I mean, it, it's only his second or third year playing football, and the kid just – he runs routes so smoothly. He, he catches the ball well. and His mom's a track athlete, and he was a track guy in high school, so that kind of tells you all that you need to know about um, his kind of speed. And, yeah, Lloyd is such a big play threat, and um, both in person and watching him, it's just – it's crazy that Dude, his, he has his, that much speed. His stride is so wonderful to watch. Like it's just, a, it's so beautiful to watch that dude run. And then Mal, you got Malachi Coleman, who I think will continue to progress into being a big threat guy. Um, they're both young and, and, and they had to learn and Jaden Doss too. Uh, but they had to learn on the fly. And I think we're going to see a big jump this year uh, as opposed to, uh, or this coming year, as opposed to, to this year, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think that it's definitely possible that we see a big jump. I mean, Jalen Lloyd is um, a stud. Um, he um, he has the most 50-yard catches um, um, alongside Marvin Harrison Jr., um, who's in the running, who's um, had a spectacular career so far at Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, um, he he's going to probably be, if he goes to the NFL – uh, he's going to be the second overall pick. I mean, it's right. just that, that's just the fact of the matter, dude. Like, uh, yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. The the, the thought of Jalen Lloyd being in the same conversation as Marvin Harrison Jr. is wild to me. Yeah, that is wild, especially since we haven't had success in developing those kind of big play guys, and suddenly we have one. It's weird. And I think we, I think we've got two. I think we yep. have two. I think I think because Malachi Coleman had a big catch. I mean. But yeah, if you guys didn't catch what what Sam was saying, uh, uh, Jalen Lloyd is the is was tied with Marvin Harrison as the only two players to have 63, 60 plus yard receiving touchdowns uh, this year, and so it's just a wild deal. And he's the first freshman to do it since two thousand and two, or he's the first he's the first receiver in Nebraska since two thousand and two to do that. But he's the first freshman to ever do it in Nebraska history. So that's. That's saying something. Um, Sam, before I let you go, dude, uh, who who out of the portal are you most excited about at the thought of them coming to Nebraska? Um, I'm really, really excited for Julian Fleming. Um, I think he has the ability to be a star here and work well alongside Jalen Lloyd and Malachi Coleman and Kyle McCord. 
um, he he throws a pretty ball, yes, and he, um, he, uh, he was highly recruited coming out of high school, and he has talent to um, exceed kind of that five-win, uh, four-win mark that we've been seeing, that we've <laughs> been accustomed to as Nebraska fans for um, – a little more than a decade yeah. or two decades, which is sad. Um, Just, it's so. sad to say that. Sad to say that. Um, I am too. Jalen Lloyd is my is definitely my guy. Um, well, man, thanks so much for coming in, coming on. Yeah, the no show problem. And, I appreciate and, uh, it and uh, hanging out with me, dude. Uh, if you guys like this video, would you do me a favor? Would you like it? Would you consider subscribing if you have not already? I just want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed, and then Sam. Let them know where they can follow you on Twitter, uh, your Twitter handle, and uh, a little bit more about last uh, last word on college football. Um, so my Twitter handle is Samuel Row twenty three. Um, here I'm going to make sure I do it right for you guys. So it's at Samuel. Um, at cap or at capital S Samuel and then lowercase R O W two three. So that's my Twitter and Instagram is Samuel underscore Roland. If you want to follow me on an additional social media platform there, you can also follow me as well. So and definitely check it out. So where what is the what is the uh, URL for uh, last word on college football where you write? So it is last word on sports um dot com slash college football all right man well thanks again or just search on. up last word on sports last word yep just search last word on college football last word on college football and he covers nebraska for them well dude thanks so much again sam for coming on with me talking receivers yeah no problem dude anytime and uh before we go go big red yes sir Thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you later. See ya. See ya.